Good morning. Sounds a little bit dead in here today. Paul had to, not Paul, Gary had to come tell me, hey, I rang the bell. So, announcements today before we begin. Um, let's say good morning to all who join us online. So, good morning. And, and um, so we're connected that way. And um, I, if you know someone who finds their way to our stream via YouTube, I didn't get that link put up this morning, so let them know they need to go directly to the channel. I know you have phones in your pockets and you text people during worship, so it happens. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I raise teenagers. I have teenagers. I know these things happen. Okay. Um, this was the deadline to bring in your dried beans. So if you left them at home this morning, go home and bring them back <laughs> this morning. <laughs> and so, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Wow. We may have re reached our goal. Okay. So a gracious extension. If you didn't bring them, you have a few more days. Gracious extension from the former teacher. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. The other thing about today is that we launch our Advent season, which is, means we roll into that new church year. Um, gospel lessons tend to come mostly from the Gospel of Luke, and um, we also, as as we'll see, we'll we'll make sure with kids we point out some things that change about this season today. Um, also, tonight we roll with Christmas Eve play practice for youth, and I know Amy has some things she wants to say about that. Yes, it should be. Okay. Um, so play practice tonight at 7 o'clock for um, all speaking parts. Um, and then if you are kids, if you like to be crafty, I've got these sheep that you can decorate. I will have them in the fellowship hall, and you guys can stop in anytime, even if you're at home and you want to stop in and pick up sheep to decorate. Um, there's instructions and there's a few materials, but you can take them home and use your own material. And then your sheep will become part of our set for our Christmas play. So even for those of you who might not be able to make it on Christmas Eve because you have other commitments, your sheep can still be here and be in the play. So um, I encourage you to take a sheep home and, and go to town on it. And you can just drop it off back at the same table um, before Christmas, and we'll make sure it gets put on the set. Here's my question. Do you cut it out? Yes, there's instructions. Okay, there's instructions. All right. Great. Great to know. All right. Um, with our um, the, uh, the beginning of Advent season, we do have midweek prayer. Um, you can take advantage of that time by tuning into a stream at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. You can show up in person. I'm not going to fuss with bulletins. They're all going out digitally, so no printed stuff. If you do come, make sure you bring your device. So, um, or you can, then it'll go up on the channel, and if you need to tune in at another time, really encourage those kind of devotional practices for Advent, this Advent season of waiting and watching. So that's on Wednesdays. And then um, next Sunday, we got a lot going on. And um, if you're part of that angel tree process, um, those names went out like that. So, um, but everything needs to be back here next Sunday and unwrapped, but marked with the number of your child. So that's next Sunday after church. Women of Faith are doing a nativity cookie decorating event. Um, 
very, very fun, very relaxing. And um, that begins after church. So um, that's going on for Ladies of Faith. And I, I haven't been told we have to RSVP to someone, but if you feel like you want to let someone know you're coming, get in touch with a Helzer. All right. And they're Helzer and Good, um, Julie Good, and, and that group. So Shannon is one of the ones, Shannon particularly is our organizer. So if you want to do that, then um, some of us have been singing in that community choir and they do their concert at 3 p.m. at South Bloomfield United Methodist. They also will have a stream going on their Facebook page, um, which is, this is how theirs read, South Bloomfield United Methodist Church is what you'll want to search for. And that is at three. It'll be about an hour and 15 minutes. If you show up and are in person, um, there's a light lunch and reception afterwards. So, so that's next week also. And then at seven, if you're part of that Christmas Eve youth stuff, you come and you practice, particularly if you have a part. Um, those two initial things are for people with parts and you know who you are. So. Um, that's um, December 12th. Um, we have second Sunday coming. We're also going to be baptizing that little Charles Grishel that day. It will be just a really meaningful worship. And um, I guess he's Charlie. And that's Brooke's little one. And um, so we have that that day, gathering for worship. And then in the end, we have a carry-in and some caroling that afternoon. So some some really just really meaningful things happening here in the next couple weeks. So want to encourage you to do that. I think that is enough announcements. Um, anybody else though with, I wore the wrong glasses. So um, I do know it's Joy Hoover's birthday this week. So we would like to sing for you and I think we made Kim come up here last week. So I, once we did that, I feel like we have to invite others forward. So we're going to sing for you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joy. Happy birthday to you and many more. She hopes so. We are thankful to God for all you bring to our gathering. And that's why we recognize birthdays. Um, because we are all made by God. There's that creation of all you people and all that you bring. Okay. Um, prayer concerns that you do not see or are concerned this group doesn't know. And yet you have and want to share. I don't. Oh, the, okay. Go ahead, Kathy. Mm -hmm. All right. So for Annie, as she prepares and they watch and wait for a liver transplant. Okay. Any others? Yes. Okay. So did you say Scott? Okay. All right. So we're going to pray also for Scott Hoptman who needs just questions answered, health questions. Okay, any others? All right. Um, that's all I'm seeing from you all. You can tell us all later. Remember, we have our prayer circle, um, some folk that are committed to confidential prayer. Um, I hear about that. It goes out via email and that group does not share. Um, I hope you're not. Um, 
So think about that when prayer is needed for other things. So, all right, let's go ahead and listen to our prelude, and then we'll begin with a confession and forgiveness. Please rise for our confession and forgiveness. Um, you can find it in your printed bulletin or in that digital bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls creation into being, who came among us as word made flesh, who sustains us as we wait until all things are made new. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Eternal God, you created human flesh, yet we betrayed you by our disobedience. You led us out of slavery in Egypt, yet we doubted and defied you. When your son came among us, we rejected him as our saving king. We have stopped keeping vigil and watching for signs of your eternal coming in our midst. We have given up on the power of your spirit, believing that cruelty and sin, evil and injustice are the new ways of our world. We are convinced we must live without hope, with no message to share. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God speaks the endless word of love through Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. God strengthens you anew to receive this Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. We're singing um, a hymn that um, is, is very joyful. For some of you, it will be very familiar for others you are going to say, ah, not so sure. Um, with one voice, 626 is the hymn, and we're singing verses 1, 2, and 4, People Look East. People, look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People, look east and sing today. Love, the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad the earth is bare, one more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. Look east and sing today, love the roses on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, him who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today. 
way. Love the Lord is on the way. We are going to continue now um, with our lighting of the Advent wreath, and we have families who are doing that for us, and we have one family that got hit by illness, and yet I was told, Lewis, you're going to come and represent everyone for lighting of the Advent wreath. You weren't briefed. Really, you weren't? You don't have anything? Okay, come on, you and Morgan. I'll get you guys going. All right. You're going you're gonna to read this, and then we're going to sing, and then one of you needs to light a purple candle, and then you're going to do our prayer of the day. Okay. All right? I'll give you the, the pulpit. <laughs> Okay, we praise you, O oh God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels, enlighten us with your grace, and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. Now we'll sing the verse from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel that's printed in your bulletin. I won't be singing. I got it. O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and nigh. In strength and beauty, come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. please. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sin and redeem our lives for your ways of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, we'll be seated and listen to our lessons. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm for today is Psalm 25. We're doing verses 1 through 9. You can find it on page 226 in the front of your green hymnal and we will read the verses responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, 
For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Our second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Our gospel verse for this Advent season um, helps us really see how God comes down and makes sure we are seen face to face. And we hear that always in our gospel lessons. If you need to look at the music, it's 716 in the With One Voice hymnal. That's the tune, and it's the first verse, Word of God Come Down on Earth. Please rise for our gospel verse. gospel for today is from the 21st chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to invite our little ones to come come up here. And my message relies a little bit on memory. And I was thinking of my older kids. I got to get really tuned in that I got little ones. Don't I? Come on up here. Come sit with me and Blaine. Oh, Blaine, you're a great example, aren't you? All right, Beck, it's okay. Hi, Fender. Joey, you can go ahead and, and find a place to sit too. Wow, here we are. Here we are. Well, did you guys have a Thanksgiving day at your house? Yes. Did you? But you had some of Christmas time. Yeah, that happens. Sometimes we do parts of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What kind, did you see people there? Did you see anybody who came in, in their real self like and showed up? Who came? Your family? Your family came? Did you have anybody that came? Yeah. Who'd you have, Jermaine? Oh, you're talking to Paisley. Sorry. Who'd you have come? You went to, you guys went, you guys were the people who came. Yeah. And you got to see people. Now I remember last year we had to sometimes hear about that. We didn't get to see grandmas or grandpas. Did do you remember that last year? We had to not see some people. Yeah. We had to not see which did you like better? The one where you got to see people face to face. Or the time you had to just see him on video or call him up. Which one was better? What do you think? It was nicer to see them face to face. Yeah. Are there things you can do face to face that you can't do when people are far away and on the telephone or the video? What kind of things do we get to do? We can play games together. We can give hugs and we can get hugs. Yeah. So I don't know. I really like it when we get to be face to face. That's a phrase that adults use face to face, which means we're together in the same place. So let's pray because Jesus in this Advent season, we get to see Jesus face to face in that little child. So we've changed some things here because we're waiting for Jesus. We've put blue on. Did you guys notice the blue came on? I have blue on. There's blue over there. And we started to decorate too because we're waiting to see the one who comes to see us. And that is Jesus comes to see us because we are loved. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you want to see us and that you love us. Amen. Amen. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now, if you were down in the nursery, you head on back there. So if you were with Jack and Owen and Amy, or maybe it was Paul, you're saying hi. You're saying hi. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Have fun, Owen. It's not. <laughs> He's very polite. He's going, I'm seeing my mom. Let's pray together. Dearest Jesus, we are thank you, thankful to you that the Spirit gathers us. That we come together and we get to see each other face to face. 
you're still in the middle of the times when that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And we are grateful. We are grateful for the gift that you are a God who connects to us face to face. Help us to understand and see that as we move through this season, how that is possible, how we can know when we are those who live in faith. Faith in that story of the Jesus who walked among us and whose spirit still stays with us. Help us to grow in knowing you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I had, um, I had a hard time putting down some memories this week, and I don't know if you did too. Just that whole memory of, of how... Last year was so different, and this year is what it got to be. Um, as I was preparing to be with you, I kept thinking, what was I doing last year at this time? Oh, I was trying to think of ways we could connect, but not connect, because we weren't going to see each other face to face, and we were just trying to be so creative. And so I don't know if you noticed the prayer that launched our second reading from 1 Thessalonians. It was such an appropriate prayer as the Thanksgiving weekend wraps up and Christmas and its gatherings and its concerts and its worship services approach, especially, um, so uh, listen to it again. This was the beginning of the 1 Thessalonians reading. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you. Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now, I don't think we could sense the depth and the wonder of that prayer unless we had so recently gone through our last Advent and our last Christmas season. As I told you that, those thoughts were on my mind this week. I remember mourning that I was not going to see you face to face. I was frantic to know how we were going to connect how we were going to sense the aroma that arrives in this place sometimes. On Sunday mornings and on that Christmas Eve, there's aromas of cookie gifts that are getting passed around, and there's special perfumes as people are dressed up, and there's that aroma of the candle wax, and then there's the gathering wonder of candle after candle being lit and we all join together for Silent Night. I mean, that is not something you can replace. And how are we going to share smiles across the sanctuary and hugs in front of this tree and shoulders? And I've noticed that happening. Shoulders jostle at the communion table. How were we going to go without that? How are we going to sink into that moment that we get every once in a while when somehow we smell that stable, when we see the star of Bethlehem, and when we truly feel we are kneeling before the baby king. How was that going to happen? And like Jesus' followers of long ago, night and day, I prayed most earnestly that we could see one another face to face and restore whatever was lacking in your faith. Now that longing to see someone face to face is not simply a human longing. It is a godly longing. There's witness to it in scripture. In Genesis, God comes and seeks out Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening so they could walk together in the garden. 
and all throughout Scripture as we are, especially in the Psalms, taught about how to live as people of God, we're encouraged to seek God's face. And that's because God wants to be known by us. God shaped us. God knit us together in our mother's womb, counted the hairs on our heads, breathed life into each one of you. So we have a hands-on, face-to-face kind of God. It's a relationship where God seeks us And we're encouraged to seek God in return. And that anticipation, that wondering, that waiting of that moment, that's our Advent journey. Reminding ourselves that that takes time to seek and to expect. There are many opinions you all have about Facebook. I know that. It's taking me a while to wrap myself around their transformation into Meta, their new identity. It's their new name. It's um, this um, idea that they're going to expand their pseudo face-to-face world into a metaverse, a metaverse. And the metaverse is a gathering of these 3D spaces where you socialize, where you learn, where you work together, where you play together. And you gather in those cyber spaces as your cyber self. Now, for those of you that are like, what is she talking about? Um, Maybe you remember Star Trek and their vision of the holodeck where all the persons there gathered together as their holographic selves and lived there in that world. And maybe you're like, nope, didn't get that one either. So, but in these cyber world, it strikes me, and it struck me that Facebook did not choose to have real flesh and blood representations of ourselves as we are, but it chose to put us in there as cartoons, versions of ourselves that are free from vulnerability and all our rough edges are smoothed away. So I'm watching and I'm observing the metaverse. For now though, I am reminded of the ancient Greeks who felt that flesh and blood were bad, and the body was evil. And they were always contemplating how to live outside this body. In the end, they learned to tolerate the body. It was a necessity to hold the soul and to house it while it was able to then do the superior things, the higher things. And it was Uniquely able to live without limits, that soul, and that soul could go to places more than we imagined. And the Greeks believed it was the only part of us that truly connected to God's mind and God's heart. So the Greeks are appalled to hear, and we're appalled to hear, that there was a God who desired to know us in the flesh so utterly and so completely that God chose to come as a baby among us. It baffled them. And it baffles us at times. When God becomes flesh, God gets acquainted with the stuff of us that has problems and temptations and hungers and hurts and pains And with a God like that, what's going to become of God? Why should the word become flesh? Because isn't that kind of a bad thing for God? Who wants a God who is so much like us? We would rather have a God who, who rules, who gives power and dominion, whose knowledge and goodness are always beyond reproach. We never have to question a God like that. 
one of the blessings of COVID has been realizing that this kind of God knows nothing, though. A kind of God that's just up there, out there, never becoming flesh. That kind of God knows nothing about the loneliness of canceled Christmas gatherings. That kind of God knows nothing of the heartbreak of a loved one dying alone in a hospital. Knows nothing of the panic of not being able to breathe. So we are reminded in Advent that the Word became flesh and came among us. I mean, we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, over and over. And that means, O come, O come, God with us, God like us, God who takes on flesh. So I'm glad we get to come to this season again. And I am grateful that we have a God who promises to come again and to see us face to face. I don't know if you heard at the end of the Luke passage, Luke promises that we will stand before the Son of Man and we will gaze into the eyes of blessed eternity and know the love and the understanding of Word made flesh come among us, dying for us and beside us. The one who had to trust just like us in the life-giving breath of the creator God. Allowing this flesh, this blood, this life, despite its limits and its grief, this kind of life in the flesh to be full. Face to face is a good thing. We're going to sing of the wonder of that in our hymn today. O come, O come, God with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We're going to, um, that's number 34. And we're seeing verses 1, 4, and 5. <laughs> you to stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe and in our community to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, marriage, divorce, moves, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive so storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters and health diagnoses. We pray for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and the Red Cross. We especially pray for Diana Sula, who's working in Washington State at this time. We also pray that your healing bless those who are sick or awaiting diagnosis. We especially pray for Annie and for Scott and for all those who are dealing with chronic health issues at this time. Be with those who are also struggling with grief. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Take time to share peace with one another this day. All right, I see that we're all hitting the pew. Um, remember, um, if you've brought monetary gifts to share this day in response to all that God has given you, there's our box for that. Um, online folk, um, please continue. Some of you are very faithful about sending. And um, we do have some folks that have figured out how to do digital giving, and we'll connect if you need to be connected. So, and we're also kind of working on that. Um, in this season, um, 
I know many are generous in many ways and giving in many ways, and that's one of the ways we become God's face for others who are seeking God's face. So remember that as you are invited to be a part of those giving ministries. So we're going to sing together our offertory verse and say the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to have you stay seated. Um, we used this verse last year, and it's from a carol. So um, what can I give him, poor as I am? So let's sing that verse. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give him? Give my heart. Let's pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art, excuse me, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to have you stand for our blessing. The God of hope, fill us all with joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. thought there was more. All right. We're going to sing together, Hark the Glad Sound. It's printed in your digital bulletin, or it's number 35 in the green hymnal. Hark the glad sound, the Savior comes, the Savior promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne, and every voice a song. He comes, the prisoners to release. In Satan's bondage held The gates of brass before him burst The iron fetters yield He comes the broken heart to bind The bleeding soul to cure and with the treasures of his grace, to enrich the humble poor. Our glad hosts our springs of peace, your welcome shall proclaim, and hence eternal arches ring. With your beloved name. Go in peace to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through love and service to all.